Hi internet friends, my name is John and in this video I'm going to be sharing with you a few techniques that I use that allow me to become more productive when I'm using Visual Studio. Now Visual Studio is an epic IDE and I really enjoy using it. However, by installing a few extensions we can make it even better. Now what I'm going to do in this video is share with you all the extensions that I'm using in 2021. Hopefully you'll learn about a few new extensions that you haven't seen before which you can now use to make yourself more productive. If you like this kind of content, then I do weekly videos on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button right now because I would think of you as an absolute legend I'm trying to grow this channel, so I'd really appreciate it. So, assuming you've hit subscribe, let's crack on with the content. If you are a regular subscriber of my channel, it will be no surprise that I'm a big fan of VS Code. Now, the first extension we're going to install for Visual Studio is going to make it more VS Code-like, and it's going to give us all the shortcut keys to allow us to use, you know, some of the cool stuff in Visual Studio Code within Visual Studio. So we're going to do that by installing this Select Next Occurrence plugin. Before we start installing plugins, let's just make sure that we all know how to do it. It's super simple. It'll take about two seconds. In the top, you can see a big tab called Extensions. Click on that, Manage Extensions. From the dialog that loads, you can see we had this online thing. This is going to show you all of the plugins which are available in the marketplace. We're just going to do select next. Now, as you can see on this one, there's a big green tick. This means that I've got the extension installed. If you have not got the extension installed, when you click on it, you should see this big downloady button. Just click on that, download it, reset Visual Studio, plug it installed, simple. Now, the reason why I really like this plugin is that when you select some text, if you click on Control D, it will select the next occurrence for you. Now, this can be really handy because it just saves you a load of typing. And let's be honest, when we're coding, most of our work is actually text manipulation. Now, if you install this plugin and it doesn't work, fear not. It just needs some further customization. So just go to Tools, go to Options. And in here, you can see we have this keyboard. Let's do Select Next. You should see a few options. So if you just do the select next occurrence, which is this one, to configure it correctly, all you need to do is where it says use new shortcuts in, select text editor, do control D and assign, and that will make it work. The other really neat thing about this plugin is that if you put your finger on Alt and click, you can get multiple cursors. Now this is another Visual Studio thing which is really handy. So if I start typing, as you can see, I get all these cursors. So all of this stuff just allows me to be more productive. Highly recommend you install it if you haven't already. The next plugin that I recommend that you check out is called Visa 4. Sorry, I probably butchered the name. V-I-A-S-F-O-R-A. Uh, now the cool thing about this plugin is it's going to allow your source code to become easier to read. It's going to do this by adding color syntaxes around your braces and your parentheses. So what we're gonna do is uh, install it like we did before and let's see it in action. Now that I have VS4 installed, what you'll notice is that underneath my namespace, the opening curly brace right here is a sweet orange. We've also got a very pretty pink underneath the class. If I scroll down to my constructor, you can see that the parentheses right here is green and it's got a closing green parentheses. And as I'm scrolling down my code, you should be able to see where the methods and the parentheses pop out a little bit more. And I find this plugin really helps me read the structure of the code and understand where things are. It's much nicer than the default color scheme done by Visual Studio. So I highly recommend that you install this one. You know when you are compiling your solution and you look in the output window and you just see a massive like text go past and it's really difficult to understand what's going on. This next plugin will aim to help that. And it is called VS Color Output. And what it will do, as the name says, is it will just start to add a little bit more color into your output window and it'll make it much easier to read the output of your project. The next extension that I'm going to talk about is also super simple. However, it is a massive productivity time saver for me, and that is toggle comment. Now, if you use VS Code, you are probably aware that if you do a control and a forward slash, then you can toggle comments and you can uncomment things. In Visual Studio itself, you have to do the same functionality by doing a control K C or a control K and U. And it's only saving me one keystroke. However, I tend to do this every 10 minutes or so. So it is actually a big time saver for me. It's amazing. I really like it. So let's just open Visual Studio control forward slash comment, uncomment, comment, uncomment. Genius. 
Okay, the next extension in my list is definitely my favorite one, and this one is an essential. You have to download it if you haven't. Now, it's called CodeMade, and CodeMade is a refactoring tool. It's free. It is the second most popular downloaded extension in the marketplace, so it's an essential. Now, if you have a big bag of cash, ka -ching, and you can afford ReSharper, ReSharper really is the best refactoring tool in Visual Studio. However, for those of us who need to work at home, or some of us who've got no money in their skin, this is a great alternative. CodeMate comes with a really um, amazing set of features. So let's have a look at some of those in action. Now, as you can see, I've got a class in front of me and it's got a few code smells. So we've got this using statement. If you look here, we've also got a load of trailing white space. We don't really need that. Now, I've also got some private variables declared halfway through my class. One of these doesn't even have the private modifier on it. So in general, you know, a few code smells. So what we can do to access code mode is go to the extensions and then click on code mode. Hopefully you can see that from here. You can see that we've got a number of cool and useful features so we can clean up the active document. We can clean up all of our code. We can do a reorganize of an active document and there's some rules that you can configure to set how this reorganization occurs. There's another um, really useful build progress tab that I like, which will show you your build progress. And there's another really cool one called Spade, which will allow you to refactor and see how your class is organized. So let's go over some of these features now. So what we're gonna do is first is do a cleanup. So if we do a cleanup of the active document, as you can see, our unused usings disappeared and all of our trailing white space has now disappeared. Beautiful. Now we've still got these private um, variables in the middle but as you can see this one now has the private modifier it didn't have that before so now if i do a code mode and then reorganize my active document as you can see at the top now my private variables have now been pushed right up to the top which is really handy now the really cool thing about code mode is that if i go to the options right down here if i go to cleaning general hopefully you can see that what I can do is automatically run cleanup on startup. So every single time I do a save, it's gonna clean everything up for me. That's really nice. Now, another cool thing that I like about CodeMade is the build tool. As you can see, this big green thing, hopefully you saw it. Yeah, that happens every single time. I quite like that feature. And the other one that I quite like is called Spade. So if we have a look at Spade, you should hopefully see on the right here that we've got a structure of our class. And from here, we can see how things are organized. If I right click on it, and maybe you can see that, I can do a delete. I can also start moving my um, methods around and organizing my class from here. And I will also run all those sort of activities like doing a cleanup and a reorganization. So this really is an amazing tool, it's free. So if you haven't used it, install it right now because it's gonna make you so much more productive. Trust me. The next extension that I'm going to talk about is my second favorite plugin. I've talked about it previously, so I won't go into too much detail. However, this one is called Whack Time, and Whack Time is a time tracking tool. So what happens is you can go off, you go to Whack Time, you can download an extension. It works for Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code. You get a code, you register it within your Visual Studio and VS Code, and it will just monitor where you're spending your time. Now, what will happen is once every Sunday I get an email, and on that email, it will tell me a load of useful things. So as you can see, this week I spent 19 hours doing development work, done a lot of work in my content project. I've been using something called Markdown because I've been doing a book. Uh, the week after, I've spent 45 hours and six minutes on my project. I've been uh, working on my videos, so I've been working in my Embraco base project. You can see that again, I mainly be doing Markdown with a bit of C Sharp. If you scroll down the bottom, you'll be able to see that I spent five hours in Visual Studio compared to the 40 hours in VS Code. And that's what I really like about this plugin. Um, if you're trying to set yourself a goal, so you're trying to create a project or write a book, or you know, you're trying to learn to develop and you want to spend 20 hours a week, doing this gives you a good um, weekly breakdown of how you're progressing towards your goal. So if you say, I want to learn how to code, I'm going to commit 10 hours a week, you can easily track your progress with this. So again, it's all free. It takes like five, 10 minutes to install. I definitely recommend you do it because these weekly emails I find really beneficial. Next, we're going to talk about add new file. Now, as the name gives away, it's all about creating new files and it's going to give you a little bit more power and it's going to be a little bit more flexible. So when we go into Visual Studio, if we do a right click and then we go to add, 
you can see that we have this new empty file. I'll zoom in so you can see that one. Cool. So with our new empty file, what we can do is get this sweet new dialog. So if I do a file slash folder, and then I'm going to call something script.js or CS actually. Now what you'll notice is if we go back to our explorer, you can see that I've now created all these folders exactly at the same time. And that's a really powerful thing about it is that instead of having to, you know, create all our folders in multiple clicks, I can create everything just in one go. So it's nice and speedy. The final tool that I'm going to recommend is called Roslinator. Again, this is a refactoring tool, so it's going to make you have beautiful code when you use it. Now, after installing Roslinator, we can have a look at in Action Visual Studio. What will happen is you start getting access to some of these um, new modifiers here. So as you can see, we've got add obsolete. If we just start clicking around, I'm hoping we'll see some other ones. So we have rename page, we can promote page. So basically we're getting a, new, uh, a whole new host of options depending on the different types and where we're clicking. So as you can see, you know, we've got the expand property, generate equals. Again, there's loads and loads of stuff here. It's definitely worth installing. It's free, so give it a go. And there we have it. Which one was your favorite extension? Please let me know in the comments below. I'd be interested to hear. Also, if you think I've missed out on an extension that will make me more productive, I would love to hear about it. If you want to be an absolute legend, and this is a YouTube channel, so please hit that subscribe button. You will be making my day, and I will think of you as an absolute legend. If you want to help me out and do me a solid, then please hit that like button. That just basically fools YouTube into showing my videos to more people. <laughs> also, finally, um, if you go to my website, you can subscribe to my weekly newsletter. It's called The Sunday Sessions. I just give you updates about my videos, all that sort of good stuff. Go to my website. It's johndjones.com. That's J-O-N-D-J-O-N-E-S.com. Otherwise, I hope you really like these videos. I hope you have an amazing week. Until next time, catch you later.